Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Patty, thank you for joining. Sure. Right. Okay. Well, we will get started. Um, first of all, thank you for everyone that is attending and watching online. Um, my name is Brianna Smith. I am the African Diaspora um, Advisory Council Chair for Coconino County. Um, this evening we have Patty Hansen with the Recorder's Office uh, going to be giving us great information regarding voting um, and other poll information. So Patty, um, if you want to introduce yourself and take it away. Hey, well, thank you very much. I want to thank the African Diaspora Advisory Council for inviting me here tonight. And I am going to do a slideshow and go over some um, question, or information about the upcoming election. So let me see if I can figure out how to share my screen. So. Okay. And there we go. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, to start off with, I just thought I'd share with you some goals that um, the election office has for the 2020 general election. First of all, we wanna ensure that all of our voters, election board workers and staff are able to work safely during this health crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic has um, presented a lot of challenges to us. Um, but the main thing that we wanted to do was to provide that nothing prevented us from providing equal access to all voters in Coconino County. And that's required us to find some solutions by um, thinking outside the box while remaining within the constraints of Arizona law. And we were able to um, receive some federal funds to help offset the extra cost associated with conducting the election during COVID. Um, <clears throat> There's some important dates that came up. Um, the last day to register to vote was last Thursday, October 15th. Um, and this came about because of a court case. And it looks to me um, about a thousand people did were able to register and um, to vote during that time period of when the normal voter registration deadline, which was October 5th, uh, in those 10 days. So that's good news. And we have set a new record with um, registered voters. We're now over 90,600 registered voters in the county. Um, October 7th was the first day that early voting began, and this was the date that we mailed out anybody who was on the, uh, the early ballots to all the registrants on the permanent early voting list, or some people refer to it as PEVL or PEVL, um, and also anybody who requested a, a single election early ballot. So um, if you were on the permanent early voting list, you should have already received your ballot by now. Now, those people that registered on last Thursday um, and requested early ballots, we are getting those processed in the mail as soon as we can. Um, October 23rd, um, we are suggest uh, is the um, last date that you can request that we mail an early ballot to you. So if you have not requested one, but you still want to receive a ballot by mail, um, get your request in. And Friday, October 30th is the last day to vote early in person. We have several early voting sites. And then of course, the big day is November 3rd, which is election day. 
and the polling places are open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I just thought I'd point out here, the Coconino County Elections website has lots of information on it, and we're constantly updating it. So if you want to see a complete list of like locations where there's ballot drop boxes, the early voting sites, um, any of the official write-in candidates, um, our list of polling places, check out the website. And there's a lot of misinformation this year in regards to voting. So um, the Coconino County Election Office has participated with the National Association of Secretary of States to um, be a trusted information site. So please don't get your information off of Facebook or Twitter or social media or from non-official sites because unfortunately, um, some people are putting out false information and sometimes it's intentional, but a lot of times it's unintentional. Okay, um, this year we've really encouraged people because of the coronavirus, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, that the safest way to vote is to vote from home. And by that, I mean, we have the ballot mailed to you and then you can take your time, you can fill out your ballot and essentially vote from home. Um, to request an early ballot to be mailed to you, you can do it online at our website or you can call the elections office and request over the phone. We will ask you some um, information to verify that it is you requesting the ballot, such as, um, the last four digits of your social security number, your date of birth, things like that, or you can request in writing. It's getting pretty late to mail a request form to us, so I would encourage you to do it online or by phone. And why I prefer the um, to use the term vote from home is instead of vote by mail is the ballot gets mailed to you but how you decide to return that voted ballot is up to you. You can return it through the US post office mail. Um, it is a postage paid return envelope, um, but you can also drop it off at any early voting location prior to election day, or you can drop it in a ballot drop box, or on election day, you can drop it at any polling place our vote center in the county during the hours the polling place is open. So how you return that early ballot is up to you. I know several people have expressed concern to me about um, whether their ballot would get to the, us in time if they send it through the mail. So we've expanded a lot of our early, our, our ballot drop boxes in the county. Um, one thing we are, having is a couple an event coming up this Saturday and then also October 31st we're calling it signed sealed and stickered so um, we're going to have um, in the parking lot of the downtown um, building where we're at at 110 East Cherry between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. you can drive through and drop off your ballot without getting out of your car and you'll be given an I voted sticker. Also, if you've already returned your early ballot and you want that I voted sticker, I encourage you to drive through and um, get a sticker to show that you have voted in this election. As I mentioned, there's ballot drop boxes. Um, several of you that maybe they have voted in the past know that we've had a white ballot uh, drop boxes at the 110 East Cherry building and also at the County Health and Human Services building on King Street, but we've added 16 additional locations throughout the county. So I would encourage you to check that out. And um, if you um, don't have access, you know, to a computer to look it up or you know people that don't, give us a call to the office and we'll be happy to tell you the Dropbox closest to you. 
And another thing that people have been concerned about is um, how do they know that their early ballot has been received and accepted? Um, the Secretary of State has a website, which is my.arizona.vote. And this is um, what it looks like. And you can go to this website, select verify your ballot by mail status, and um, put in your information, um, photo registration information, and um, also um, they'll ask you your birth date, and um, you'll need to put in either your driver's license number or your um, voter ID number, and it will tell you the date your early ballot was mailed to you, and then it will also tell you if your ballot has been accepted or, um, by our office and process. Now, I do want to ask you to be patient. Um, if you drop your ballot off today, give us three or four days to process that early ballot because it, um, it's not the date we receive it, it's the date we processed it. And by processing, I mean, on the outside of your early ballot envelope, um, every voter is required to sign their name. And this is how we verify that the voter has actually voted the ballot themselves. We um, compare the signature on the envelope to the signature that is on your voter registration records. And um, if it matches, then um, we accept it and it's entered in the computer system. And then you are, um, it would appear on that my.arizona.vote that it was accepted. Now, I do know some people's signatures change over time, and if it doesn't match, um, we will try to contact you um, to ask you to verify that, yes, that is actually your signature. Um, with the driver's licenses in Arizona, they last such a long period of time. You may have um, signed your, uh, got your driver's license when you were 16. And if you're now in your late 20s or 30s or 40s, your signature's probably changed. In this case, we will if you, um, verify that that is you. And then we scan the signature on the envelope to, and put it in our voter registration system so we have a current um, signature on file. On the envelope, we do ask you to uh, include a phone number for us to contact you in case we do have a question. That phone number is not added to your voter registration record. We just use it um, in our office to verify if we have any questions. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there about early voting and voting by mail. Um, one thing, can a voter vote more than one ballot? No, um, we will accept one ballot for you that's recorded in the voter registration system. And if a second ballot is returned um, for you, we will only count the first ballot. And how this can happen is um, sometimes um, people will say that they had not received their ballot in the mail yet and we will issue a replacement ballot and then that first ballot shows up. Um, in Coconino County, you only get to vote once and that's what, that way across the country. Also, um, people that have passed away, we take their names off the voter registration um, file. So um, we get regular updates from the Arizona Department of Vital Statistics and um, the, uh, people that have passed away. And we also um, check um, the obituaries in our local newspapers. And two um, family members will notify us and our poll workers will notify us if they see somebody's name on the list that they know has passed away. Also, there's been some talk that, oh, you could photocopy the ballot and then hundreds of ballots would come in. No, our ballot is printed on a secure paper that does not allow duplication. 
and our ballot tabulation machines would not read a photocopied ballot. So um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I ask you all to remember, we have been voting, um, having early voting for many, many years in Arizona. I think it goes back to the early 1990s where they expanded it to um, no excuse early voting and having a ballot mailed to you. And we have put lots of protections in place to keep make it secure. Now, we also have early voting in person at several voting locations across the county. Um, some people don't want it mailed to you, but they still want to come in and vote prior to election day. And so you could come in and go to one of these locations. I do want to mention the downtown elections office at 110 East Cherry is not offering in-person early voting. Um, this was done because of um, the COVID pandemic. We want, we have spread out our staff to work at different locations because we were concerned if one person, if we were all in one office and if somebody got COVID, it could take out the entire office and we couldn't conduct the election. So what we've done instead is moved our in-person early voting to the Flagstaff Mall. And our office is located next to the Dillard's department store. We also have a second location in Flagstaff, and this is over in Sunnyside. And this is a drive up service window um, where you can vote right from your car. Um, we're sharing this space with the um, county treasurer so you can pay your taxes and vote at the same time. Um, it's um, located at the corner of North 3rd Street and East 6th Avenue, and you enter off of the 6th Avenue, um, and it has signs up to tell you where to go to drive through. We also have an elections office in Tuba City. And here what we did is um, the office is quite small, so we could not do social distancing. So our county facilities department came up with a great idea and we have this carport cover and we're doing our early voting outside at Tuba City. So um, this has worked very well for us and um, they've also been quite busy this year. Other early voting sites outside of Flagstaff, um, pay, we have them in all the city and town halls, except for the Tucson town hall. But there we have it at the Grand Canyon uh, Superintendent of Schools office. We have several locations where we're doing um, early voting uh, one day a week on the Navajo Nation. And those websites and dates are on our webpage, or you can call. And instead of ballot drop boxes on the Navajo Nation, we have ballot drive up or drive up ballot drop off locations at several places on the Navajo Nation. So election day voting. Um, we did an evaluation of all of our polling places in the county to make sure that we could do social distancing. Um, and we found that several of the rooms and places we voted at um, did not allow the six foot social distancing. So we had to make several changes um, to polling locations this year. And um, what it has resulted is we're using a lot more schools. The schools are letting us use their gymnasiums. So I encourage you, if you're planning to vote on election day, make sure you know where you need to go to vote. Um, we are mailing out sample ballots to all households of registered voters in the county. It'll go out about uh, October 23rd. Um, and the sample ballot will tell you where your polling place. So on this example, it is one for the Belmont Precinct, and they're voting actually here in town at um, the Double Treat Hilton. We just could not find a location in Belmont that would offer the um, space necessary. 
also on that my Arizona vote website, um, it has a polling place lookup. And so you could select find your polling place, put in your address, and it will tell you your polling place. Now in Coconino County, we have a hybrid system of voting. You can go to your precinct assigned polling place, and that's what these are telling you. Our, we do have um, the option of three vote centers in the county. And a vote center is um, a location where it doesn't matter where you live in Coconino County, you can go to one of these three vote centers and vote. So if it's more convenient for you, you could go to the Flagstaff Mall or the NAU Walk-Up Sky Dome or the Tuba City High School. And I skipped over, this is show you from my Arizona dot vote. Um, it shows you when you put in the address what comes up. So 110 East Cherry Avenue, they would vote at the Flagstaff Bible Church. Um, now, Arizona does still have their ID to vote um, requirements. And of course, we don't make it easy for you to figure out what <laughs> type of ID you need. Um, Actually, this was in the Proposition 200 um, language that was passed um, by the voters back in, I think it was 2004 or 2006. But you can have a valid photo ID with the name and address of the voter. Um, that would be like an Arizona driver's license, a state ID, or any other state, federal, and local government issued ID. Now with this, the address on your driver's license would need to match the address that you're registered to vote at. And then you would be issued what we call a regular ballot. That's just a ballot that will go in the ballot box. If you don't have the valid photo ID, you can select two non-photo IDs. And again, these would have to be have your name, the voter's name, and the voter's address on it um, of where they're registered to vote. Or they have an additional option, say you have a valid, uh, you have an Arizona driver's license, but the at, you have moved and you didn't update your driver's license. You could use one item from list two that shows your current address on it and be able to vote a regular ballot. Or you can use um, a US passport or US military ID and one item from list two. The th why you can't use a passport and military ID on its own is it does not have the voter's address on it. So this is the example, Arizona driver's license um, photo ID, or if you had two non-photo IDs such as an insurance card and a voter ID card, that would be a match. Um, in the list three, the passport military ID or a drive, Arizona driver's license that doesn't have your current address on. You could match that though with your um, insurance card and voter ID card. I'm sorry, my dog is, somebody's walking by the house. Okay, what if you don't have a acceptable ID? You'll still be allowed to vote. You'll vote what's called a conditional ballot. And in this case, you have to present acceptable ID within five days after the election for us to be able to count that ballot. And what I mean by a conditional ballot is um, your ballot is put in an envelope and it has a form on the front that you'll fill out and we hold it in that envelope until you present acceptable ID. We also have provisional ballots, and these are for people who are currently registered to vote in Coconino County, but they moved and didn't get their voter registration updated, or you've changed your name, or if your driver's license, um, Arizona driver's license address doesn't match your registration address, and you don't have that additional non-photo ID, you'll vote a provisional ballot. 
And the difference with a provisional ballot is we verify it in the same way we verify early ballots. We will check the information and your signature against your voter registration um, record. And these ballots are counted after the election. We do process and count all valid provisional ballots and conditional ballots, no matter the outcome of the election. Uh, there's false information out there that says we only count it if it's a close election, but no, we count and process every single one. So um, that's why it takes us a while. Um, one thing I do want to mention, unfortunately, we do not provide rides to the polling places. Um, so um, I have heard that um, Uber and Lyft has offered in the past elections, and I'm assuming they're doing so this time, 50% off um, prices to their price to take people to the polling place. And sometimes I know um, the political parties or campaigns will offer people rides to the polling places. So um, hopefully nobody is kept from voting because they can't get to their polling place. I would advise you if you're gonna have difficulty to request that early ballot so you could vote from home. And this is something a lot of people don't realize we do. Um, in Arizona, you can request a special election board to come and assist you with voting um, from your home. So if you have a, a, some kind of a physical disability that will prevent you um, from being able to uh, mark your ballot or you need some assistance with your ballot, this is an ex picture is an example from um, a previous election prior to COVID because they're not wearing face masks and they're not social distancing. But um, we also, if you need language assistance, we will have people come to your home. And how we've done it this time is we do it more from the front door and we don't come into anybody's house um, to keep that social distance and keep the voter and our workers safe. It will be two um, election workers that will come of different political parties. The caveat with this is you, if you want to have this special board, you do need to request it by October 23rd, um, this Friday at 5 p.m. So um, the deadline is coming up. Also, um, people that go into the hospital, um, right before election and will be in there um, and weren't able to vote early. Um, we do work with the hospitals, uh, uh, the hospital to um, send a special election board on election day to drop off ballots so people would be able to vote and then we pick them up. Um, the main thing again, this election is we wanna keep everybody safe. And so um, all of our election workers will be wearing face masks. They have face shields. There's the sneeze guard, which is the plexiglass between um, our workers and the, the voters where there's a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. We have gloves available. There will be san hand sanitizer um, available. They're regularly disinfecting the voting booths, the pins, and the electronic poll book. And on the Navajo Nation, we send out hand washing stations because several of our polling places um, don't have access to running water. Um, we are requiring all of our voters to wear a mask to vote. Um, and if they don't want to wear a mask, we're not going to refuse the person, you know, say, no, you can't vote. What we do is we ask you to return to your car and we will have two election workers that will assist you from your car. And we call this curbside voting. And we've had curbside voting for several years for people that could not um, come into the polling place on election day. Um, but we've expanded it now to people who don't want to or cannot wear a face mask. 
Um, of course, on election day, everybody likes those I voted stickers. Um, I'm proud of the one in the lower right, which is our um, Navajo language I voted sticker. And um, as I mentioned, we're having that event the next two Saturdays where you can come and get your I voted early sticker. Wanted to touch on our ballot counting equipment because there's a lot of misinformation out there that elections are easily hacked and it's um, that our equipment is not safe. Um, I want you to know we use two high speed central count ballot tabulators and they're connected to a computer. That computer and that equipment has never been connected to any network and that includes the internet and never will be. It's what's called an air-gapped system. The computer's hooked to those two machines and that's it. So there's no way anybody could hack into those systems um, unless they broke into our warehouse or we gave you access to them and we're not gonna do that. And we have a lot of security at our elections warehouse where our equipment's at. So we take security very serious. Also, our equipment is tested by the Secretary of State's office. And then also the county does a, a test. It's called a budget, uh, public logic and accuracy test. And th these are, they'll run pre-marked ballots through the equipment and they have um, the predetermined results. And after we run it through the equipment, they break the seal on an envelope, they take the results out um, and compare it to the results of what the equipment counted. And uh, uh, representatives from the Democratic and Republican Party verify that the results came out accurately. And we have other safeguards in place. We do a lot of testing of our equipment prior to election day. And there's also a post-election logic and accuracy test to make sure that every, nothing was changed prior to the election to after the election. Um, counting early ballots. Arizona allows us to start counting ballots, 14, early ballots starting 14 days prior to the election. In Coconino, we're going to start counting a week prior to the election. And, you, and what I mean by counting is we run the ballots through the ballot tabulation equipment but we don't print any results. So we don't know any of the results of any of the elections um, prior to election night. And what we do is about 7.30, we print out the first results report. And that's the report that we post on our webpage right at 8 p.m. And that report includes all of the early ballots that we've received and processed through Monday prior to election. So um, you're, if you're turning in your early ballots now, um, those ballots will be counted and they'll be included the, in that first report we release at 8 p.m. And you can watch the ballot counting on our webpage, there will be a link and we have live video streaming 24 hours a day and you can actually see um, the equipment and our counting board running the ballots through. And then at night, you'll see the ballots locked in there. Um, and we have a, a kind of a cage device to keep it secure. So you'll be able to keep track of what's going on. On election night, we will um, count the ballots and then we post those results, new results every 30 to 40 minutes until we've counted all of the ballots. So uh, one thing I want to uh, let you know is we have new voting or ballot tabulation equipment. This is the third election we'll be using this. And the difference from our old equipment is our old equipment, the ballots 
went through a tabulating a tabulator that counted them right at the polling places and the results were modemed to our warehouse and flagstaff now um, arizona does not um, allow any uh, tabulation equipment now and voting equipment that utilizes modems so all of the voted ballots from the polling places have to be brought to Flagstaff and run through our two tabulation machines. Um, they're transported after the polls closed. Um, and um, we have um, two election workers of opposite political parties that will transport them in our, um, we also have a sheriff deputy that will bring them in from the far reaches of the county. So we're going to have ballots coming in from Fredonia and Forest Lake. So we probably won't be done counting all of the ballots until after midnight now. And one thing people ask me is, why does it take so long after the election for you to finish everything? And there's several reasons. Um, one of them is those early ballots that are turned in on election day at polling places or in the drop boxes or come through the mail need to be processed. We have to process provisional ballots. Those conditional ballots, the voters have that five business days. So we have to wait at least five business days to make sure to see if those voters have presented acceptable ID and also early ballots with mismatched signatures, um, voters have until five days after the election to contact us and verify their signature. And the reason um, it takes so long to do the early ballots um, after the election is we, we have to put our voter history in for everybody who cast a ballot at the polling places because we wanna make sure that you didn't go to a polling place and then you also dropped off an early ballot because um, we don't let you vote twice. So it's a safeguard. Also, one thing I don't know if a lot of people know is after the election, um, there's representatives from the Democratic and Republican parties that serve on a hand audit board. And what they do is they randomly draw some of the races um, and then um, they randomly draw what um, poll, uh, the polling places and they will hand count the results for those races at those voting locations and they compare it to what the our tabulators tab counted for those polling places. They also do this with batches of early ballots to make sure everything matches. So that hand um, tally, the hand audit is compared to the machine tally for those races and those polling places to make sure everything was counted accurately. So that also takes time after the election. And I thought I'd just end um, my presentation because I want to recognize one of my heroes in my life and a true champion of voting rights that we lost this year, um, Congressman John Lewis. He spent a lifetime making sure, striking down barriers to voting. And he, I think, understood more than anybody I've ever heard about the power of voting and believed in it. So I'd like to recognize his lifelong service to the election community and our democracy. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you may have. Hopefully that gave provided some information that you didn't have before. Thank you so much, Patty, for that information. Um, it's a lot of things I didn't know. So um, I can only imagine everyone else took away some great info. Um, for any of our attendees, you may ask 
a question. I know that the chat is open. Um, if you have any follow-up questions for Patty. Madam Chair, this is Eric Peterson. Attendees can also raise their hand and I can give them speaking permission if they wish. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, this is another message. Uh, Patty, question. Uh, can you reshare about how long it takes for early ballots to register as received? Okay, it's taking us about three or four days. Um, we're getting it several thousand in each day. Um, as of close of business on Friday, I haven't been able to check today's. We had had um, 21,000 ballots returned so far, which is 32% of um, the total early ballots that we've issued. So it looks to me like um, a lot of people are voting um, their early ballot early <laughs> and getting it into us now. So I would say three to four days at the most five, but we are working a lot of overtime and um, trying to get through that as fast as we can. Good question. Um, there was a question on YouTube, someone posted. Uh, any video on the doors to the warehouse similar to what Maricopa County has? Um, we just have one camera that shows our um, ballot tabulation system. Um, Maricopa County, I know, has a huge warehouse, which I'm quite jealous that they have, but, <laughs> and they have um, a, an extensive um, video camera set up where you can see several different parts of their warehouse. So, but ours, we just have the one. It will go up the first day that we start early voting or counting the early ballots. So it would be the Tuesday prior to the election. I would um, check our um, web page and you'll be able to see it. Okay. Questions. Don't have any other questions coming through yet, um, but I did want to confirm, uh, Patty, that there um, is 50% off uh, through Uber and Lyft for vote for those who do need it. Okay, well, thank you for doing that. That'll help us tell people if they call us. Yes. Madam Chair, I have a question if I could. Yes. So, uh, Patty, um, thanks for the, the information. Could you, um, if a voter goes to the wrong location, but, you know, is can't get to the vote center, can't get to their right polling place, what's their option at the polling place to make sure they can get a vote cast? Is there any option? Yes, there is. Thank you, Eric. Um, yes, our new um, touchscreen voting equipment, which is really a ballot marking device um, we have for voters that may um, have some sort of disability, um, like it allows blind voters to vote an independent ballot. It can it has all of the ballot styles for the entire county in it. So if you go to a polling place and it turns out it's the wrong one, they will be able to offer you the opportunity to vote on that touch screen, um, the ballot for your correct polling place, and you won't have to travel to your correct one. So um, we're excited about that and we hope that makes it more convenient for voters. So thank you for asking. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, for still waiting on more questions. Um, but for any of the attendees, um, if you could put your email address um in the chat or if you're live on um I think John. Johnson was watching, if you could please 
give me your email address um, so that I can enter you into the raffle. That would be wonderful. Well, we have a few more minutes. Oh, I can let people know um, this year um, we had so many people respond to be uh, poll workers at our polling places that we um, actually have more people now signed up than we have places for. So I want to thank all, any of you that are poll workers that have signed up. Um, this is a problem we've never had before. <laughs> So we're very happy to have it. Um, and um, if you hear wrong information, um, come across it like a misinformation or just wrong information, um, if you would let the election office know, we would like to uh, make sure that that's corrected. Um, Facebook and, and Twitter have been very good about um, working with the election officials that they will um, take down any wrong information that is out there. So um, that will help us, uh, you can help us monitor any efforts to um, put wrong information out. Madam Chair, you're muted. Um, as was muted. Um, could you, I know we had a couple people join. Is it possible, uh, Patty, for you to just go over those dates one more time um, for the timeline? I think it was your sure. It's like a second or first slide. Um, yeah. That way we have that and then. Sure. Okay. Um, did you want me to bring it up again or just tell well, you, you just the read, Yeah, if you can just read them, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, our Friday, October 23rd, that's the deadline for you to request us, um, the election office, to mail you an early ballot. Um, so that's coming up this Friday. That's also the deadline to request to, to have a special assistance board. Um, bring a ballot to you and provide you any assistance you may need. Um, we would schedule that assistance the next week. Um, Friday, October 30th is the last day to vote early in person at one of our early voting sites. And we are going to have, it's called emergency early voting on Saturday, October 31st at the Flagstaff Mall and our um, drive up window and also the Monday before the election. And it has been determined that concern about um, possibly contracting COVID does qualify as an emergency. So if you decide that you wanna avoid crowds uh, possibly at a polling place or you don't feel comfortable going on election day, you could also vote Friday or Saturday, October 31st, or on Monday, November 3rd. And then election day is November 3rd, and the polls are open 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. And then we have um, one question, one more question. Uh, what prevents someone? Actually, two more questions. What prevents someone from reading the results before election day posting? Um, we don't print a report. So nobody, there isn't a report to read. Um, okay. The only um, information that comes up on the computer is we run the ballots through in batches of 100. And so it will say like batch 20, 100 ballots was read. And um, that's the only report we have. And we do that because if it, um, our early um, voting board, which processes and opens the ballots and get them prepared to go to um, 
the accounting board, they um, put a batch sheet on top and they'll tell us there should be a hundred ballots in there. So if we run that batch through and it says there's 101 or there's 99, we will zero out that batch and rerun them through again. And then if it's still different, then they will hand um, count how many ballots are in there because um, we're all human. <laughs> And unfortunately, humans make mistakes. So that's why we build those checks into the process. Thank you. Um, another question, how often are the ballot drop box, drop off boxes checked? Um, the ones in town are being checked or picked up daily. Um, the ones where we're having the most ballots dropped off like at King Street and 110 East Cherry are being um, picked up twice, uh, I mean, twice a day. Um, the others are daily in town. Um, and then our outlying areas, we have them in Sedona, Munns Park, Belmont, Williams. Um, and those are being picked up every other day. Um, we're tracking how many ballots come in. And when they're picked up, we have two people of opposite political parties um, go to re retrieve the ballots. They have paperwork that they record the number of ballots they picked up. They're put in a sealed container. When they come back to the office, then that sheet is compared to the number in the sealed container. And there's a lot of auditing that goes on. And so um, it, we think it's important to have um, you know, two people involved in the process to make sure everything's secure. So that's a good question. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, we have time for um, a few more questions if anyone has any. Um, I did try to check the YouTube and didn't see any more questions. Um, but they are being asked. Okay. And then, um, I also wanted to, um, provide, you mentioned it, uh, Patty, but I wanted to provide anyone who's listening, um, the phone number for the Special Assistance Board um, as well, which is 928-679-7860. And that is for um, someone coming to your residence. And the deadline for that is October 23rd. That's correct, right, Patty? Yes, it is. Alrighty. Okay. Well, um, for those of you again who are participating, um, if you can just send me your email if you haven't, and then we will get you entered into that raffle. Um, there actually is one more question. Um, and I think you you did answer it, um, but just in case um, you, you didn't hear it. Uh, do you publish the logs showing the chain of custody for the balance? Um, we don't publish them, but we have them available and we keep them. They're part mm -hmm. of our retention materials, which we're required to keep for 22 months after the election. Well, that seems to be um, all the questions. We do have a couple more minutes. I'm trying to give everyone the time till seven. So, Yeah, I guess I can also mention, I know some people have expressed concern 
about um, political observers at the polling places. Um, Arizona state law only allows um, official um, poll watchers or observers. Um, they have to be designated by either the Democratic or Republican Party. There's one allowed per polling place and they are given credentials. So if you are not a voter or not an election board worker or one of the um, political parties observers, you will not be allowed to come into the 75 foot limit or in the polling place on election day. Um, that's Arizona state law and there's been some people that are concerned that um, they think that they can designate themselves to be a poll watcher, but they cannot. So, but outside the 75 foot limit at the polling place, and what that is is 75 feet from the entrance to the building of the polling place, there is no campaigning that's allowed and no people can be congregated there. So um, outside that 75 foot limit, they can, um, you can, you may see um, some campaign signs or there may be people handing out literature that is allowed under Arizona state law, as long as it's outside that 75 foot limit. And each of our polling places has a poll worker that's designated to be the election marshal. And their responsibility is to maintain order at the polling place and to uh, enforce the 75 foot limit. So. Um. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Patty, we have a lot of thank yous in the chat. Um, so I just want to reiterate that um, on behalf of the council and um, the county, thank you for coming out. Um, tonight you know, via Zoom and taking the time to uh, provide us with all of this information and hopefully um, you know this will benefit our voters as well. Um, there is one more question. Um, how are we, uh, due to the election um, being pretty heated, um, how are we ensuring everyone's safety? Um, that's a good question. Um, we have been meeting regularly with um, the Flagstaff Police Department and the um, Sheriff's Department. Um, and um, we're, um, we've taken um, voter security very serious. For the past year, we've been meeting um, at least once a month with the Secretary of State's office, the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and all these other agencies that have lots of letters, <laughs> acronyms. Um, and so we're, we've come up with a security plan on how to deal with situations. Um, luckily, I've been working here in a Coconino County for 17 years and we've never had problems. And I'm hoping that our, our county uh, will again um, be the kind of county that I've always felt very proud of and there won't, won't be situations. But if there is, um, we will, we're preparing on how to handle anything, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a very good question. Yes, it was. Okay, well, um, Patty, again, just thank you for your time tonight. Um, thank you for the valuable information. And um, if there are no more questions that I'm seeing, we will conclude tonight's town hall and uh, let everyone have a good night.